Let's not talk about the Trinity then, because that's just uh, Okay, yeah, yeah, sure, let's yeah. Let's talk about the foundations. Of, so what do you want, like, um, about leaving Islam, stuff like that? What made me leave, stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. So I understand it's your personal subjective experience. I don't like how I'm but, but, but you know, like, experience can also be something ongoing. Yeah, it's so you can always, like, um, you know, you can come to a more better, like, realisation, yeah. like, when you... Like look back at your personal experience and have like a better understanding like in hindsight yeah. so I'm um, like Will's a Unitarian um, you can try to um, I mean why don't you get Will's number and see like when you check out a Unitarian church see what but Unitarians me, believe in me, if the Trinity was real or not man I wouldn't mm -hmm. really, it doesn't really bother me because what really matters is Jesus Christ is resurrected or not Mm -hmm. And for me, if God was to exist, he would come down himself because us man cannot live a perfect example. Mm -hmm. But that's why I believe God had to come down as Jesus Christ to represent us. Because we couldn't do it, we are all sinners. So this is why I believe like God had to come down as Jesus Christ to to live the perfect example so which we mm -hmm. can follow. And which Jesus did. No sins. Yeah. I, I mean one is to do with like whether it makes rational sense. But another thing is like you can say I just believe it because yeah, that's what the Bible yeah, says. Nah, nah, or I really from history, because I'm already, as you said, I, I was a Muslim first, and like, mm -hmm. I was obviously, I was obviously thinking about Unitarian beliefs as well. Because that's like, you know, sometimes you think, how can the Trinity make sense? Mm -hmm. But then, like, you know, you, like, um, you look at all the Bible, you see, obviously, the word Trinity is not even there. Like, it's not like the word Tawhid. That's what you say. mean in the Quran? But it's like, it's like the Trinity. It's not um, the the word's not really there. But you see the concept coming through it, mm -hmm. right? But that isn't that doesn't really matter. There, the Christian, I think the most the most fundamental of the, of the belief is believing the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. I and agree, believe yeah. in his word, which is true. You know what I mean, and I believe, I believe that Jesus Christ was God. Yes, and like, do I do I have any? Do I like um, hate Unitarians? No, mm -hmm. I still I still accept them. I still love them. Unitarians, I think they also believe in the resurrection as well. They believe in the but resurrection. The but they have a real, they have a real different belief on. The, some of them are Jehovah's Witnesses. I see. And they have a lot of weird beliefs on the resurrection. So at the same time, they believe that Jesus will come in their watchtower, in their offices, headquarters okay. in America. But <laughs> they, not, they, not all Unitarians are Jehovah's Witnesses, by the way. Yeah. Most of them are oh. But yeah, as I said, Islam as well. Now, now going to Islam, I was like, the reason why I can't, I wouldn't be able to be Muhammad because like he said he had revelations when he was in the cave of Hebrew. But when he was in that cave of Hebrew, like the angels, first of all, the angel, the angel came to him, pressed him, in which you couldn't believe. So how can you trust? Uh, like, um, how do you know if that really was an angel or a demon? Because it came to him three times and pressed him till he couldn't breathe. Mm -hmm. I don't see any accounts of an angel coming to somebody and pressing him till they couldn't breathe. Have you read the Quran? I read the Quran in Arabic. I, I read some parts in um, English. English. I see. Uh, so in the Quran, Satan is someone who's cursed and who's condemned. So the Quran tells you not to follow in the footsteps of Satan. Yeah. Um, Satan like, in, like in basically invites you to your destruction. But whereas God is inviting you towards his forgiveness and mercy. Okay. Um, the Quran says to do good to the, uh, the travellers, uh, to, to look after the orphans, to do justice, um, to, to look after the widows yeah. and to fight for those who are oppressed. Um, the Quran also says, um, had God not driven one set of people by means of another, then the synagogues and the churches and the monasteries and the mosques, yeah. where, where in God's name is remembered much, would have been demolished. Yeah. Uh, so the Quran speaks about religious freedom, speaks about there's no compulsion in religion. Um, I get what you're saying so there. So this doesn't sound like a satanic. No, I get what you say there, but Satan comes to an angel of light. So Satan will do tricks to deceive, thinking this is God, this is a different religion. So he's going to say mm -hmm. some things in there to think that it's a good idea. You know, I mean, like, even in, in the music industry, Satan pretends it's good, saying, oh, you'll have all this fame. This would be good, but deep down there is a deception. I'm a religion as well. Like, if Satan's not going to say, oh, like, come and follow me, you'll have all, uh, it's going to be bad. He's going to say some good things so you come to it mm -hmm. and to, to make it sound like it's true. And even back in the days, people were doubting Muhammad, saying, this is, this is a Satan who told you this. Then the Satan gave Muhammad another revelation, saying, no, it is not me. It, it, it is not me. It's Allah who's giving you this revelation. You can see Satan was kind of like, um, he was kind of like, um, you know, he, like scared because people were coming to knowledge that this was Satan. So Satan had to give Muhammad another revelation, you know, and he's so hesitant. He's, to have make you, believe have you seen? Him. Have you seen the movie The Message? It was no, like a Hollywood it. movie done on. So you know, like there's Hollywood movies of Jesus. Yes. Uh, there was one Hollywood movie that was done of the Prophet. It's called The Message. Um, it stars Anthony Quinn. Um, it's on YouTube. Um, so basically, um, it shows you like what Arabia was like before Islam. Yeah. So the Arabs, they were like stooped in sin and in idolatry and the, the, uh, in alcoholism um, and in other bad stuff like gambling. Yeah. 
Um, so they were already in hell, like metaphorically. Uh, so why would Satan try to go to them and lead them astray no, if they're already yeah. astray? That's what I'm Satan does, he does do uh, tricks. He plays a lot of tricks. And within these people, they pretty much, these pagans pretty much never believed in Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? So, so do you know who believed in the God of Abraham before Islam? Uh, it's it Jewish people, right? Exactly. So these people didn't believe so in Jesus Christ. So Satan would want to go to those Jewish people yeah. and try to mislead them. Yeah. He's going to do many tricks because Islam Such was rising. Worshiping another Is, Is, God. Is, Islam was rising, besides. rising in, in them days, right? It was rising. It's going ahead. It's flying. So Satan probably uh, allowed Muhammad um, to attack them in order to bring uh, Islam ahead, which is why, which is why um, the 360 idols they were destroyed. And then Muhammad, what did he do later on? He he made it. He allowed the black box and the black stone to um, go in place. And that made a lot of people go What's to the, the black box. The Kaaba, the Kaaba. Oh, okay. That made a lot of people in Saudi Arabia at the time go to the Kaaba and do worship. Worship, which is more bad than the um, than the you know the other pagans what they were doing. Kaaba's just a mosque, so you can and go in, you can go inside yeah. and pray inside the mosque. Um, so yeah, think, it's like the Temple of Solomon. I think from my from my perspective on on, on, um, on the Kaaba, obviously the Kaaba's a black box, and you get right. It's like, it can be like any black box. You know what I mean? They're not like they might not be worshiping it. They it might, they it's might. not a, any box, but it's it's a lo it's the location yeah. uh, that um, Abraham built the like mosque but for no worship any, of no God. There's no historical proof that Abraham did build it, right? Uh, but, but, I mean that, that that's a separate question. I mean. Can maybe make mention like um, in the Bible may even, allude but, to it. But like yeah, in as I was saying, but with the Kaaba, right? So the reason why I see it as idolatry is because when I went there, right? When I went there, this is my experience. I'll just tell you my experience. You can just tell me, like, you know. So a lot of people there, they were going around the seven times doing twice, and they were shouting words called Allahumma Labbaik, Allahumma Labbaik, right? Yeah, that means Oh Allah. I'm yeah, they here. were saying these chants, right? And it's like the Hare Krishnas. The Hare Krishnas in their religion, they do the same thing. They chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. But in reality, these words have no effect to the heart no matter how you say it, you're just saying it you're not doing it from the heart it's not a real relationship with God and these people would just say these words and not it would not have any effect it's just words it's yeah, just like, yeah. Just, you, you should believe in religion out of sincerity and devotion like you shouldn't do it just because you happen to be born into that religion and you shouldn't like memorize words like in parrot fashion but you try to understand you know what you're reciting and to whom you're praying to and, and why do you pray or worship that person even um, Safa Marva, when I saw Safa Marva, you know Safa Marva is? Yeah. When I saw that happen as well, when people go up and down, up and down, it's just, it just seems like an occult to me. Because I, like, I've seen the Hare Krishnas, mm -hmm. and it's so similar to Islam, and they would go up and down chanting names. That particular story is mentioned in Genesis, in Genesis 21, where uh, Haiga, you know, when she ran out of water, yeah. and so God opened her eye to a well of water. Mm. So that's understood to refer to the, the Zamzam water. Zamzam -zam water, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is like present today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so God names him Ishmael because God heard uh, uh, Hagar's prayer. And he, uh, God says to her, like, to arise and lift up the sun. Um, and I believe, um, it's, I, I don't remember the full verse, but I think it says to the effect that I will make him into a great nation. So. Great nation means that they will believe in the same God of, of Abraham. Um, even in, in the Quran, in Surah 355, it says how the yeah. disciples of Christ will be superior to everybody else. Mm -hmm. And these disciples of Christ preached about Jesus Christ's crucifixion and resurrection. Mm -hmm. And there's no doubt in history about that. You know, so if these people so are, do you know the context of that verse? Yeah, it's, it's trying to say about um, these disciples of Christ, they are superior to everybody else. Yeah, it's mentioned in comparison to those that disbelieved in Jesus. So Quran says some believed in him and others rejected him. Uh, so those that believed in Jesus like didn't reject him, even if they had like warped beliefs about him, um, they will be superior to those that rejected or disbelieved. And we see that today. There's more people today. Surely they can't be superior if they're preaching the false doctrine, the false Quran. Because they were preaching about the, the, what they saw, the resurrection and crucifixion. So if they are superior, surely like, um, they can't be superior if they're preaching false doctrine. Because the Bible will tell, no, the Bible says there's been many false prophets and to not listen to them. Yeah, so these yeah. are false. Why would Allah say to them, like, they're superior? But it them? also says to judge them by their fruits. Um, that's what, that's yeah, so if there was no more prophet to come after Jesus, then Jesus wouldn't have given this acid test to judge them or test them by their fruits. So it means that there was to be at least one more true prophet. Do you believe Muhammad was a true prophet? Uh, yeah, I believe he was the one who was prophesied by Jesus 
as the Son of Man and also as the Paraclete. The Son of Man, that prophecy was fulfilled when Jesus says, I am the Son of Man. Because, you know, he says, I am the Son of Man. Where? I can't remember the worst. I'm not going to enter there. But if you type in in Google, Jesus says, I am the Son of Man, it will come up. Because when Jesus speaks about the Son of Man, like at his trial, he speaks about the Son of Man is to come. He hasn't yet arrived, no, no, he but he, right. he will. No, no, he, he, talks about it. I think he, says he, he doesn't says, say, I am the Son of Man, but he says, and you will see the Son of Man coming. Not that you will see the Son of Man returning in the clouds, but you will see him coming. So, meaning he hasn't yet arrived, but. Yeah, so when he says the second coming, right? So, obviously, the, the priests, they came to him and they, and they, they were like questioning him, who are you, this and this, right? And Jesus then later on he says, you're, so, uh, from now on, you will see me sitting at the right hand of the Father, come down. He doesn't and, say that in Mark's gospel. Yeah, but, but, but in Luke, he says, he's from he's now on, you will yeah, see the Son of Man. So he's not saying at the current time, but, but that, it, yeah. So, he's trying to say about the resurrection, how Christ will come down in the second coming to people. And even the crown, you believe Jesus will come down. Yeah, but, but well, that's not mentioned in the crown, but strictly speaking, um, it's like in the Hadith. Yeah, still mention the Hadith. Still um, like, but, but you know, Marx is like the earliest of the four Gospels to be written. So it's closer to the time of Jesus. So what it preserves is closer, like in memory. So Mark has it that Jesus prophesies the coming of the Son of Man, uh, whereas Luke has it that the Son of Man is Jesus. It is, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so the story's been changed. Like from uh, Mark to Luke. Imagine these, these were eyewitnesses, right? And they were also gathering, they were also like gathering events for people that they heard. Yeah. So obviously, like, imagine like you had an event that happened, like a car crash. There's going to be many people who are going to say different things. But the story still lines up. The message, that word is still there. That saying was still there. Yeah, and Mark's not collecting information, but he's using Mark. Mark wasn't a disciple. He was, Mark was using yeah. Peter. Yeah. So Mark was using the Apostle Peter's um, narrative and what he saw. I mean, so obviously, yeah. like, and then Luke used Mark to write his own gospel, but Luke changed what Mark wrote by having the Son of Man become Jesus. No, no, but the, the Son of Man, everybody knows Jesus. So, uh, look, I'll show you what I'm speaking about. Uh, so, you know, in Mark chapter 14, um, Jesus prophesies the coming of the Son of Man. Um, this is Mark chapter 14, I think it's verse 62. Um, so he said, and Jesus says, I am, uh, and yeah. you you yeah. will see the Son of Man seated at the yeah, right so, hand, okay, coming with the means? clouds. Yeah. So what that means, he is saying he is the Son of Man, and he is saying you will see him seated at the right hand of the Father. Meaning, yeah. when the resurrection, when the resurrection comes, right, you will literally see him. He is going to be the one. He is the truth. So he in Mark 14:62, he says, "I am the Christ, the Son of the Blessed." They ask him, "Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed?" He says, "I am." And then he goes on to speak yeah. about the Son of yeah, Man so he, they, there, coming. There's many prophecies, uh, yeah. there's many prophecies um, attributed to him. There's one in the book of Zechariah, there's a prophecy to him. Yeah. There's so one here he's prophesying about the there's, coming there's, of the Son of Man. There's one called the son, son of Man in the book of Daniel. That's what he's on about. And he is the Son of Man which came down. Well, he doesn't say he's the Son of Man in that particular no, that's place. Him saying, I am, he's, that's literally him affirming that he's the Son of Man. He says, down. I am the Christ, the Son of the Blessed. No, he, he said that. I am, and you will see the Son of Man come to the right hand of the Father, which is talking to him. He yeah, is the Son of Man. He's speaking about the Son of Man rather than saying, speaking about himself. No, no, but if speaking he, if about knew how Jesus speak, in the third person. No, no, but that's, Jesus spoke a lot like that. Like even when he spoke, uh, said, uh, spoke to the Pharisees, they were, they were saying to they were saying mm -hmm. to him, like, um, they're saying, are you the... Are you the look, look, here's the same saying. They ask him, are you the Christ? And he says, are you... Um, if you are the Christ, tell us and so on. But and then Jesus said, but from now on, the Son of Man shall be seated yeah. at the right hand. So he's no longer speak prophesizing about the Son of Man to come, but he's saying that from now on, the Son of Man is seated um, at the right no, hand. He's not saying that this current. Jesus spoke a lot about the future. So, for example, how he he said he said it worse, like say, where um, he says like um, where two or three are gathered, there I am in the midst of them. Yeah. I mean, that's him talking about when he when he's going to, when he's going Paul to heaven. Paul says the will, same thing be, about it will, himself. It will, as well. be on, it will be on earth. And when Jesus said, "From now on, you will see me sitting at the right hand of the Father," he's talking about the future. That that everybody will see him as sitting at the right hand of the Father, come to judge the nations. Well, he's speaking of the present. He's not speaking about the future. He is talking so about the future. But from now on, the but Son of Man shall be seated. Jesus spoken very. He's spoken very like he's spoken figurative uh, language. He's spoken very. But you know, the story has been changed from Mark's gospel to Luke's gospel. You get Luke's get Luke's gospel. So, so, um, so, so uh, I, I'll show you because in. Um, I'll just show you side by side. Because uh, these are different writers. They are different. They are different writing styles as well. So look, look. Mark says, "I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power, coming with the power from the clouds of heaven." 
Well, as Luke says, but from now on, the Son of Man shall be seated at the right hand. Yeah, they're, they're, they're so similar. There's nothing wrong with that, brother. They're so similar. Well, here Mark is saying the Son of Man is coming with the clouds. Yes. Whereas in Luke, he's no longer coming. He's already here okay. in the person of Jesus. Yeah, yeah but the Son of Man is still sitting at the right hand of the Father. He's still there. He's still seeing him there. You still see him there, right? Well, it says you will see the seated at the right hand, yeah. coming with the clouds. Okay. So he's coming, whereas in Luke, he's already here. He's no longer coming. Yeah, because if you look at Luke's writings, back in the days, they called, uh, they're writing in like a manuscript, right? And they're writing in like something called the, um, they're on like, um, on like animal skins or leaves. And there, and there was not much, there was, uh, in that time, there was not, like, there was not um, enough to write on it, which is why Luke had to summarize a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And the other gospels, they summarized it as well. So you, there's, there's going to be different narratives and different stories. It's like, it's like, a, it's like a, I told you, it's like a car accident. There's going to be many different, um, many, there's going to be, it's going to be one event. So there's yeah. going to be many people different, telling different stories from what they saw, but what they heard. What if there's like 10, 15 year gap between the witnesses? So if like the earliest witness probably has the more original story, than compared to the witness that came 10 years later and retold the same yeah, story. Obviously, one, obviously like, um, you know, one person... So, do, do you know this saying, like in Mark 8, 38? Um, Jesus says, whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous, sinful generation, um, yeah, so, so, so the Son of Man be ashamed. So Luke might have been summarizing the story, yeah. and then you have Mark, who might be writing it full depth. There's nothing yeah, yeah. wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with But it, 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 in Mark, when Jesus speaks about the Son of Man, he speaks of him in the future to come, whereas in Luke, the Son of Man is already present, yeah. like in the person of Jesus. So the story changes, like Jesus it becomes it's the just, Son of Man. Mark was an addition into it because he might have heard something that, Pete, um, that Luke didn't. You know I mean, it's just because in the Quran, Jesus prophesizes the coming of another messenger after him. He, he, he's still at 61. A, a true prophet, right? Well, we say the Quran sorry, is the messenger of Allah. Very shortly. Oh, okay, Which very scholar yeah. uh, doubted the zombie story in Matthew? There's a scholar. Uh, Mike Nicona. Michael Nicona. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you know how he said Muhammad was a false true prophet? Yeah. We were talking about that, but I didn't really think into it. But the reason why I believe how Jesus cannot have preached about him is if you look in, if you look in the Old Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy, it says that um, a false prophet will not have any source for judgment from them. Right? And then let me go Where does it say that in Deuteronomy? It says in. Uh, yeah. In. Um, Oh, I actually, actually break my fast. Okay. Uh, but uh, just here's a thing. I mean, right? you're welcome to come and join us. But here it says, it says like. Um, you said Deuteronomy chapter 18. I can't remember what it says, but here it says like it's basically saying magic will not be done upon a, any false prophets. And then here it says in Sayyid Bukhari 5765, magic was worked upon Allah's messenger so that he used to think that he has sexual relations with his wives while he actually had not. So yes. Muhammad here was so hallucinating. Those narrations he has sex with nine wives. So if he's hallucinating here, how can yeah. you trust his other revelations? So he's hallucinating or not? Have you heard of someone called Mufti Abu Laif? I don't know. He's, I don't know. No, no. So he's done like a commentary on this particular hadith and he basically concludes that they're not authentic. Sahih Bukhari is very authentic because I see a lot of Muslims, right? Yeah, so when something goes generally, against the, when yeah. something goes along their scriptures, they just deny it because they So have you heard of them. Imam Shafi? I didn't, I didn't, I, see, I didn't, I didn't really listen to Imam because I see so a lot. Shafi was before Bukhari, yeah. so he said after the Quran, um, the Muwatta, if Imam Malik is the most authentic book. Mm. Uh, so, so which hadith collection? This is like a scholarly debate. Because uh, Bihari um, is, is generally... Like, like so well. Some scholars say the Muwatta from Imam Malik is more authentic than Bihari. Uh, but you have to take each hadith on a case-by-case -case individual basis. Uh, but check out Mufti Abu Leif. He's done like a series on... Uh, but I don't know, man. I feel like even Muhammad when he says his ayota was cut off. But you know, you know what, the, I mean? what the Quran says is um, those that put, place their trust upon Allah uh, Satan has no power or no authority over them. Yeah. So the Quran is like contemporaneous to Muhammad. It, it's the collection of what the Prophet preached. Uh, so the Quran preaches that Satan has no power or authority over the believers. Yeah, but obviously Satan, Satan's, the, Satan's known as the father of lies. So Satan does tell a lot of lies. And I believe Satan was the author of the Quran, yes. given his revelation to Muhammad. So obviously Satan's going to be telling lies. So, so what is the job Satan of Satan? Like Satan. Kill, 
to kill steal and destroy it. and if you knew how yeah, satan but works, what is the will... purpose of him killing and destroying it's so that a person ends up breaking the commandments of God. Yeah, like that Muhammad, thou shall not murder yeah, or thou shall not kill. Yeah, Muhammad neither did. Muhammad, like you can see, he tried to commit suicide. But, he beat his wife up. Again, that's not in the jihad. Quran. That's not in. Uh, Surah Al Faithful. It says to beat your wife up. No, it doesn't. It doesn't address the husband. Like the husband's not mentioned in Surah Four, verse twenty-four. In the Bible, it actually mentions that you can beat your child with a rod. Um, and in the Bible, it makes mention that you can sell your daughter to slavery. So that more realize, sounds the, like the Old Testament. It says you can beat your female slave well, the old, with a rod. Realize the Old Testament, right, has been has been we have been freed from it. But in the in the, in the yeah, Quran, but isn't the, isn't that us. Jesus in the Old Testament? Yeah. That like, do you believe Jesus is God? Yes. The reason. So Jesus gave those laws I, according yeah, to you. Jesus, the reason why so Jesus you gave, end up making no, no, like Jesus gave his laws. Jesus gave his laws and he freed us from it. But Muhammad, he never freed us from it. You're still in, in now in this age of society. You're still stuck in slavery. So you're still stuck in women. As a Christian, are you allowed to? Are you? Are you allowed to commit adultery? Are you allowed to commit murder? What does Jesus say? Do not love your enemies. Yeah, so you're you know still, I mean? you still have to He's follow the law. It. You still no, have no, to Jesus obey the law. Not come to abolish the law, but to fill all the law. Exactly. And, so now we, and now he's given us a new law to love our neighbor as ourselves and to love our God with our mind, heart, and soul. That's the yeah, new law that's so given to us. The, the and Quran love God includes not killing people, because Jesus said in the mountains, he said, he said, he gave all these commandments. So, you know, to, yeah. To so in Surah Four, the Quran says, "Do not kill, do not kill one another." Yes, but you're, but so you're why would Satan say, do not kill one another? I, I, I told you before, Satan is going to do some tricks in there to, to pretend, to like, um, to kind of like, how, you, how do you know then that, that's how, how, how do you know that the New Testament then isn't satanic? Um, I, I don't believe that, but how do you try? Because, I read it, try? There's, there's because much, if, if, Jesus, if the New Testament says the same thing as the Quran, no, Jesus, then if, how do you know Satan's not tricking if you? Look, you, in? If, you look at, if you look at the New Testament compared to the, the, uh, the Quran, these people witnessed an event that happened. And that was, um, and these, pretty much these church fathers as well, these historians, pretty much attested to so these. So there's no uh, one. These church Sorry. fathers pretty much attested to these disciples as well. So we know this was a historical event. Then you have a man who comes 600 years later, who never saw this event and says Jesus Christ never crucified, but it made to appear that he was there's crucified. There's no eyewitnesses to the crucifixion John. in the New Testament. Well, we have, we have John. John is a good disciple, yes, John. But John and Mary. The Gospel of John's not written by John. Because it, it says, it says, it says, it says, it says there that um, this book was written by the apostle whom Jesus loved the most. In which, we know, say which we know, it was John. Uh, yes. How do you know it's John? And also we know it's John. Because it doesn't, John, John doesn't say John wrote John. No, no, also we know it was John, right? Because no, because John was known as the disciple in the, in the Bible as the disciple whom Jesus loved the most. Yeah, but how and do you, but how do you know it that? Said, it said, because Jesus then goes on to say that the disciple whom I love the most wrote this. But wrote that this. disciple isn't named. You're just assuming no, it's, it's John. Because even these church fathers, such as Polycarp, Polycarp was a disciple of Jesus uh, of John. Yeah, but, Poly Polycarp, but Polycarp never words. quotes John. He does. I'll give you his word right now. I'll give you his word right now, but I'll just say po it's po 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 Poly po Sorry about the cameras, but because uh, the, the problem with the cameras is it takes, uh, takes out the sincerity or genuity of the conversation. That's right, You're just more conscious about like how you look on camera. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't really like that. Yeah, hopefully next time we can speak off camera. Yeah, but um, yeah, Polycarp. Um, but po Polycarp never quotes the Gospel of John. He quotes the other Gospels, but he doesn't quote John's Gospel, which is one of the reasons why scholars doubt um, the attestation that John wrote John. And even the Gospel of John tells you that it wasn't written. Here it is. And this was the words of Arrhenius, who was like, he knew Polycarp. And this is what yeah. Arrhenius says. He says, I could tell you the place where the blessed Polycarp sat to preach the word of God. It is yet present to my mind with, the, with what gravity he everywhere came in and went out. What yeah, was so that's Arrhenius no, no, speaking. I, I was still saying, so yeah. What was the sanctity of his deportment, the majesty of his countenance, and what were his holy exhortations to the people? I seem to hear him now relate how he conversed with John and many others who have seen Jesus Christ. These were the words who, um, who, which he heard from the mouse. Yeah. So this is more reliable to so believe than that's, somebody that's who came to years writing. later. Yeah, but Arrhenius knew Polycarp, he knew you see this. But po Polycarp, we have Polycarp's writings uh, where Polycarp quotes the other Gospels, but he never quotes the Gospel of John. And Polycarp himself never says he knew John. It's only Arrhenius. But no, no, Poly Polycarp, um, Poly it says here, it says, it says, it says here, yeah, 
He says, I seem to hear him now relate how he conversed with John yeah. and many others. That's Arrhenius speaking, yeah. Arrhenius wouldn't Ar like because these church fathers, the reason why they wouldn't like because they pretty much died, died based on their faith. Why would these church fathers make a lie up, then die for their faith? It doesn't make sense. So what these church fathers said, these were true men of God. They have no motive to lie. In everything, they have to lose by lying. Have you heard of Eusebius, the Eusebius church was like, historian? Was like he was a church father, yes. So he says it's permissible to lie in order to propagate the gospel. Mm. So he's willing to lie in order for the gospel to be spread. I didn't believe that because UC was, <laughs> was pretty much died by faith of preaching the gospel. Well, well you, you can check that out. It's our uh, Yusuf Ishmael in his debate. Is James White Hastings? Oh, yeah, but oh, I don't know. James, okay, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. James White? Yeah, I hate him. I was watching James White yesterday with Anna Rashid. I don't, I don't oh, okay. hate James White. I just think that he's did you so see, bad. Did you see the recent problem. debate with him and Del Taki? It was last week. But yeah. I mean, uh, James White is just not indicative of even like reform theology. A lot of the reform James like, White. <laughs> so the reform theologians, like in their circles, like it's him and Jeff Durbin, and like that's it. Um, but the reform theologians, like that are actually good, or not just actually good, but like are indicative of their theology. They don't like James White. Yeah. Because James White is a Calvinist, but he rejects divine simplicity, even though Calvin's view has always been divine simplicity. Really. And it's like his view of anger is different. It's so weird. Like he's. I don't know. Um, but check out James White's debate with Yusuf Ishmael. So he quotes the Eusebius quotation. Um, have you heard of Yusuf Ishmael? I've heard of a Muslim scholar, hasn't he? Uh, he, he? He's not a Muslim scholar, but um, uh, he's a, a barrister by profession. Uh, but yeah, he does Muslim Christian uh, debates and stuff. So how long have you been a Christian? Probably like three, four years. Now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm still learning. I came, I came, I come to learn. That's why the reason why I came to you because mm -hmm. you, I, I thought it'd be good for you to ask me questions. And which if I don't know, I can then go and look on later on. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so it improves my face. I, I like to ask scholarly people. Uh, those who are uh, quite I'm not a scholar myself. But you're nice so to talk to you, man. Because a lot of people so. they, they would get like kind of they would get kind of loud and you can't even talk to them. Like, it's all right. Mm -hmm. You're nice to talk to me. I respect you. Thank you. Well, I'll let you take your, uh, your fast uh, It's okay. I'm, uh, I still got a few minutes, so. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. Do you think you'll come again? Yeah, yeah.